Welcome to Will and Dad's reading channel for kids. I'm Will, and today we will be reading Comfort the Terrible by Nancy Tillman. And I used to love this so much when I was a kid that Mom has it memorized, like the whole story. In the wee little village of Sweet Apple Green, in the tiniest cottage you've ever seen, was a cat causing trouble within and without. A cat named Comfort, Comfort Stout. This is a really funny book. But love isn't measured in muddy galoshes or broken tea dishes or trampled on squashes. No, love is the thing that just happens, you see? Like the way I love you and the way you love me. Look, cummy. Because it's also short for Tumford, and it's on his tummy. And so it goes, Georgie and Violet Stout love their cat Tumford day in and day out. They set him with Violet to twinkle fish pot and nicknamed him Tummy. Can you guess why? But oh dear, and oh my, there was one small pity. Tumford, it seems, was a most stubborn kitty. In spite of the manners he often forgot, he would not say, I'm sorry. Instead, do you know what Tumford Stout did? Well, I guessed it. Well, you, I see you've guessed it. That's right, tummy hid. Look at him, he's in a shopping bag. <laughs> of all the things he thought were the worst, saying I'm sorry surely came first. Look, he's blending in with all these stuffed animals. And he's like, One day, V and Georgie both said to each other, As Tumford Stout's father and Tumford Stout's mother, we could try a plan of a different kind. Perhaps with a treat, Tommy might change his mind. In the village today, there will be a big fair. It would be grand if we all went there. But Tommy, V said, Look me straight in the eyes. If you make a mess, you'll apologize. You must promise, Tummy, 100%. I promise, said Humphrey, and off they all went. This is my favorite part. Him walking in his yellow rain boots like this. Look at his face. He's like... As Violet was eating and Georgie was pinching, out of the blue, Tommy's nose started twitching. Something smelled marvelous over the hedge. My, he could see it right off, right there on the ledge. It wasn't his usual baked trinkle fishes, but kippers, his favorite of all fishy dishes. Before they could join him in the game, a game of uh, Rover, Tom had forgotten himself and jumped over. Oh, the, the, oh, then the crash and the squeals and the shouts. Oh, then the trouble ha that met Humphrey's doubt. Heavens and stars of all apple, of all sweet apple green. Tom had spilled fish on the village fair queen. And I bet you know just what Humphrey's doubt did. That's right, you guessed it. Humphrey's doubt hid. He likes hiding. And he's actually pretty good at it. <laughs> Look. It's hilarious. Those words are just awful, he thought. I can't do it. They'd stick in his throat and he'd choke. He just knew it. It wasn't that he was all bad, Tumford Stout. It was just so hard to get those words out. But then as he hid, a new thought started growing. It warmed up his tummy and toes and kept going. The thought grew so large that it, he said it out loud. It might feel good if I made the staffs proud. It might make them happy to see me happy too. Maybe that's, maybe that's why it's the right thing to do. I'll bet you guessed what comes next in the story. Tumford stepped toward, forward and, he, and said he was sorry. He meant those words too. What's better than that? For nothing is worse than an insincere cat. I have a pet cat. His name's Elvis, but we call him Ellie. Both the shouts cheered, then the crowd cheered again, because everyone felt so wonderful then. And Tummy, well, Tummy just sat back and purred, had the wondrous effect of that one little word. 
And so there you go. That's the end of the story of how Tumford Stout finally said he was sorry. There aren't always cheers when he knocks over platters, but he's always loved, and that's all that matters. Thank you for listening to Well Made Fat Reading Channel for Kids. I'm Will, and I wanted to sign off saying bye.